Please join me in welcoming Harriet B. Nemhard, president of Harvey Mudd College. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Harvey Mudd College, let me extend a warm welcome to all members of the Harvey Mudd College and Claremont community, including faculty, staff, students, alumni, family, friends, Claremont City representatives, fellow trustees, as well as college and university delegates who have come here to share in this historic occasion with us. Dr. Nemhard comes to Harvey Mudd bringing a depth of experience in teaching, scholarship, administration, mentorship, and leadership. She is nationally recognized leader in the field of industrial and operations engineering. Dr. Nemhard previously served as Dean of the College of Engineering at the University of Iowa, where she led initiatives in strategic planning and implementation, improving the college's research profile and increasing diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. She is a voice on the national level for transforming undergraduate STEM education. Dr. Nemhart studied management engineering at Claremont McKenna College and industrial engineering at Arizona State University before attaining her PhD in industrial and operations engineering at the University of Michigan. Dr. Nemhart's appointment at Harvey, as Harvey Mudd's sixth president marks the first time in the college's history that HMC has been led by a graduate of a member institution of the Claremont Colleges. Dr. Nemhart is joined in Claremont by her talented husband and professor of engineering, David Nemhart, and they have three daughters, Olivia, Naomi, and Charlotte, and a grandson, Kai. We will hear from David and Naomi later in the program. We proudly welcome the entire Nemhart family into the Harvey Mudd College community. As we begin our program, I am pleased to welcome the Willard W. Keith Jr. Fellow in the Humanities and Associate Professor of Religious Studies, Erica Dyson, to the podium. Good morning. Today, a benediction and an invitation a blessing and a call. Welcome to our community, whether you are long part of it, maybe long in the tooth, whether you are new to it or new-ish, and you still may be reveling in the many satisfactions to be found in learning about and from the eclectic collection of humans that populate mud. Humans who are occasionally uncompromising in their foibles, but incomparably generous with their intelligence, their humor, and their grace. And they, like I, claim you as one of our own and are eager to learn from you and to be changed by you. In this spirit, welcome to our new president, Harriet Nemhard, and to our new colleague, David Nemhard. May our work together in this next cycle of our coming together be, prove us worthy of special endeavors, as our most worthy and beloved Iris Critchell has described the students of MUD. May we do the difficult work of community, of interconnectedness, of mutual responsiveness and responsibility, of holding each other accountable to our best selves, our most innovative, creative, and vital ideas, our deepest connections to justice, our riskiest but possibly most promising interventions into the systems that limit human thriving. And may our ancestral mutters, perhaps Joe Platt and J. Arthur Campbell, busily notating some great lab notebook in the sky, pause and lend us their wisdom and strength, whispering to us algorithms or aphorisms, whatever is necessary to keep us going, when it seems that our efforts are not yet sufficient to create the change we want to see. Welcome.
I would now like to welcome Kathy French, class of 1997 and president of the Alumni Association Board of Governors to the podium. Good morning. I'm honored as the president of the Alumni Association Board of Governors to be here on behalf of the near 8,000 alumni of Harvey Mudd College to welcome all our special guests, the delegates honoring us with their representation, President Emerita Strauss, President Emerita Clave, the students, faculty, staff, trustees, my fellow alumni, the Nimhard family, and President Nimhard. Back on September 26, 1957, as Harvey Mudd College formally opened its first academic year, President Joseph Platt invited those in attendance to consider the year 2000 and what they might behold. He then charged the assembled group that the responsibility belonged to each of them, saying, the future of Harvey Mudd College is what we make of it. President Platt, the initial faculty, staff, trustees, and those early students embraced his challenge guided by the vision of our mission, paraphrased, as educating in all forms of STEM, as well as humanities, social sciences, and the arts, to create leaders who have a clear understanding of the impact of their work on society. Those early students went all in in trying to meet President Platt's challenge. Each cohort has continued to inculcate the deep dedication to our mission and using the time at MUD to build a broad foundation as a means to try and tackle each individual's vision of what they would behold decades into the future and how to positively impact it. Today's events formalize passing our leadership torch amidst an ever more complex atmosphere. While President Platt had no way of envisioning the specific challenges and opportunities ahead of us today or 43 years into our future, he correctly identified it is what we make of it. I am in awe of this incredible group of people assembled both here and virtually, to help President Nemhard begin launching her vision for the future of Harvey Mudd College. We have an amazing team to support Harriet's deliberate and thoughtful leadership as we make great strides in finding solutions to the challenges ahead of us. Thank you all for coming and sharing with we alumni in continuing to make Harvey Mudd a leader in undergraduate education, preparing tomorrow's leaders. Thank you, Kathy. I'd like to introduce Hiram Kodosh and extend a greeting on behalf, to extend a greeting on behalf of the Claremont Colleges. Hiram has been president of the Claremont McKenna College since 2013 and is the current chair of the Council of Presidents. Hiram. Thank you all. Wow, what an historic moment. Our feet set firmly in the ground of this fertile valley, soaked in the sweat, wrapped in the hopes of our ancestors. Our Claremont Colleges, a rich red gold compost of old stories, poems, and books, penciled answers etched in the stone of mind-twisting problem sets, cracked codes, of insoluble calculations and projections. Our arms push through the walls of any space that confine us. Beyond the limits of what we know, our reach pierces the ceilings of our cramped, shingled ceilings. Our eyes set on the horizons, honoring all who led us here. We see through the storms, the moon lights our path through dark days. Stars point the way to our dreams. Even those dashed or deferred in the past move us again today. Historic because today we give formal expression to the inauguration of President Harriet Nemard of Harvey Mudd College, our fifth of the Claremont Colleges. 
We are not a mere consortium of separate institutions. We are a family, siblings who have grown out of one another, charging forward in shared purpose. The younger schools were cradled, nurtured by the others before they walked, ran, sprinted on their own. Today, for the second time this year, we celebrate the inauguration of a president who is one of our own. The inauguration of a prominent alumna, a graduate of Claremont McKenna College, who also recently served on CMC's Board of Trustees. An outstanding dean and national leader in engineering education, now the leader of the world's strongest liberal arts college for science, math, and engineering. This is a proud moment for each of us, all of us, not just in a destination reached, more for the road not yet mapped. This is not only because Harriet's leadership emerged from within our own house, it is what she now brings to our table, her special capabilities that will lead us forward, an unwavering dedication to learning from her great-grandmother, a one-room school teacher, and her grandmother who taught for 40 years in the public schools of Atlanta, to the precocious 16-year-old high school graduate with the courage to join Claremont McKenna's 3-2 program, the fresh perspectives and diverse experience of a young academic leader at Penn State, Oregon State, and Iowa, the power of a, of a profoundly integral mind, learned at the deepest level where STEM fuses with liberal arts at the roots of our Claremont family tree. A clarity of purpose drawn from personal experience and that of her parents to break down barriers and expand opportunities for this next great generation. A mission she drives through every moment. An open, curious mind that questions how things are done and why so that we can all find a better way. A generous, loving heart always focused on the well-being of those around her, especially her incredible, beautiful, and brilliant family, David, Olivia, Naomi, Charlotte, and grandson Kai. Her uncle and brother aren't too bad either. A loyal friend who supports us unconditionally and challenges us always to be better. A special combination of wisdom from experience, curiosity from global exploration, and joy in the arts. A resilient soul that will not be crushed by the burdens of leadership in our demanding arena. The deepest personal commitment to innovation, brilliantly engineered leadership, collaborative creative problem solving to improve our human condition the personification of the best of Harvey Mudd, the best in us. A singular combination of qualities that will take each of us, all of us, to new places not yet imagined. This is Harriet Nemmark. This is our Claremont sister. This is Harvey Mudd's new president. This is why we are so excited, honored, moved, hopeful, energized, purposeful today. Please join me in welcoming Harriet home. Please join me in congratulating her, Harvey Mudd, the Claremont Colleges, all of you here today on her inspired appointment. Please buckle up as she ramps up, as we take off, and thank you, too, for flying with her wherever she soars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hiram. Joining us next to share a greeting from the faculty is Chair of the Faculty and Professor of Mathematics, Susan Martinosi.
It is my honor to make a few remarks on behalf of the faculty of Harvey Mudd College at this celebration of President Nemhard's inauguration. Propelling innovation is an apt theme for Harvey Mudd. Harvey Mudd has been innovative since its founding, challenging the norms of STEM higher education, from its mission statement and groundbreaking clinic program, to the Hickson Center and myriad pedagogical innovations that our dedicated faculty have introduced over the decades. But even more so, propelling innovation is particularly apt for this moment in history. The world is on the brink of catastrophic climate change. Generative AI has rich potential to better the human experience while it simultaneously threatens our national security and our democracy. Political polarization casts shadows on scholarly inquiry and scientific reasoning. Technological innovation has led to rich and sophisticated advances intertwined with complex unintended consequences that threaten our very existence. Technical solutions cannot, on their own, solve these human problems. The world needs Harvey Mudd. But not the Harvey Mudd of yesterday or even the Harvey Mudd of today. The world needs the Harvey Mudd College of tomorrow. The world needs Harvey Mudd to continue to propel innovation as it always has to continue to transform STEM undergraduate education and serve as a model to other colleges and universities, to conduct high impact scholarship that expands human understanding of our world and how best to ethically impact it, to launch our graduates into this messy world we collectively have created, equipped both technically and socially to change it for the better. As we stand on the precipice of our future, we are fortunate to have in President Harriet B. Nemhard, a leader who is prepared to leverage Harvey Mudd College's fine tradition of innovation to propel us forward, to help us achieve our mission and our potential. We, the faculty, stand with you, Harriet, to shape the next chapter of Harvey Mudd College. Welcome. Thank you, Professor Martinosi. Our next speaker served on the Presidential Search Committee and will share a greeting from staff. Assistant Vice President for Institutional Research and Effectiveness, Effectiveness Laura Polucky Blake. Good morning. It's an honor to be part of this moment in Harvey Mudd College's history and on behalf of the staff uh, to welcome President Harriet Nemhard, her friends and her family to the Harvey Mudd community. President Nemhard's presence, her words and her leadership are supported by preparation, curiosity and care. These are three critical pillars that fill me with hope for Harvey Mudd College. Throughout the course of her career, she has demonstrated the courage to engage in challenging conversations and to make difficult decisions while simultaneously exuding the joy, warmth, and wonder that is required to lead an institution like ours with empathy and integrity. As a member of the search committee, I can remember very clearly meeting President Nemhard early in the process. I was struck by the fact that in, in putting herself forward for the role of president, it was not as if she raised her hand to say, pick me, pick me. It was more like she outstretched her hand to say, here is who I am, and here is what we might create together. That stayed with me, because like so many people here today, I delight not only in the education that we provide here at Harvey Mudd, but in the community of scholars, athletes, artists, researchers, makers, entrepreneurs, inventors, foodies, activists, and pranksters that make this place so special. As important as it is to take pride in who we are now, I also revel in the individuals and the community we will become under your leadership. Is it an easy time to be a college president? It is not. But at Harvey Mudd, we're not easily distracted from our purpose. We know that the world needs the inventions and solutions that we design together. The innovations and interventions born here at MUD hold the promise of improving people's lives, lifting our communities, and making our world better for those who will inherit it. 
The experiences, backgrounds, perspectives, and enthusiasm that the staff bring to Harvey Mudd every day are incredible assets in this endeavor. We know we're better when we come together to learn, to grow, and to thrive. In our differences, we find great potential. We're looking forward to working with you, President Nebhardt, to build bridges, to strengthen connections, to learn from one another, and to work together to build a strong and inclusive community. President Nemhard, your presence here today signals a fresh start, a new era, and a commitment to the college that we all love. On behalf of the entire staff, welcome to Harvey Mudd. We embrace this journey forward and the positive impact we will have together. Thank you, and welcome, President Nemhard. Thank you, Laura. We will now hear from our students. Please welcome President of the Associated Students of Harvey Mudd College and current senior, senior Kaylee Tsai, and the Senate Chair and current senior Henry Hammer. Hello, my name is Henry Hammer and this is Kaylee Tsai. Today, we are serving as representatives of the student body. Like many of the other speeches you will hear today, we are here to raise up the wonderful work of President Harriet in her recent time at Harvey Mudd College. In writing this speech, Henry and I were reflecting on our experience with President Harriet over this year. After considering our consistent collaboration with the president, one story in particular came to mind. Henry and I were fortunate enough to attend a weekend at the Saddle Rock Retreat in Palm Springs with the president. During an evening activity, President Harriet noticed that one of the students appeared cold in the chilly desert air. Without a word, she retrieved one of the Harvey Mudd embroidered throw blankets for the student and wrapped it around his shoulders. Not only that, but President Harriet insisted on wrapping a blanket around herself as well so that the student did not feel out of place at the formal function. This small act really stuck out to us as students. This anecdote speaks to President Harriet's kindness, foresight, and compassion, but it also emphasizes the fact that she is one of us and will go through all trials and triumphs with the entire MUD community. President Harriet has been such a joy to have on campus. She is a kind leader who really takes the time to stop and acknowledge everyone, making them feel valued. From the meetings where she commented on our matching Converse shoes, to the club fair where she stopped at various student booths, President Harriet's warm smile and laughter bring light to others' lives. In her short time at Harvey Mudd, she has already proven invaluable to our practice of shared governments as Mudd student body presidents. One reason that President Harriet has joined us at Mudd so seamlessly is that she is no stranger to the Claremont Colleges, having attended Claremont McKenna for undergrad. This experience has already proved valuable, as when we reached out to President Harriet to ask for suggestions on improving Harvey Mudd's room draw system for our youngest students, she advised that we look to our fellow colleges. This guidance was fortuitous, as it not only led to a new room draw retention system modeled after CMC's similar policy, but also inspired us to join our fellow 5C student presidents in bringing back strong intercollegiate collaboration. On a more personal note, President Harriet has been an invaluable resource to us as rising leaders. She has taught us the difference between choosing the correct option and the right option, and how to always lead with kindness and empathy. We have taken many of her words to heart and continue to look to her as a role model for excellent leadership. We wish we could be on campus to continue to see her thrive and bring the college to new successes. We ask that even when Henry and I graduate, this community takes a page out of President Harriet's book and wraps her into the mud blanket of support for years to come. We will continue to watch and applaud her triumphs on campus through the news and alumni relations because we have much hope for the future of the college under her leadership. Thank you and welcome President Harriet. Thank you, Kaylee and Henry. 
Next, please welcome Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees and member of the Presidential Search Committee, Laura Larson. Hello everyone, I'm honored to be here today to celebrate the inauguration of Harriet Nemhart as the sixth president of Harvey Mudd College. When I joined the board, my daughter was a student and often while visiting with her friends, someone would ask me, what exactly do the trustees do? Quickly gauging the interest of the group, I kept it brief. We're responsible for the budget, we oversee the president, and when the time comes, we're responsible for hiring a new president. I believe they remained unimpressed. It is the rarest, yet probably the most important role any college trustee can serve. Aside from the enormous, never-ending task of leading day-to-day -day operations of the college, our president must also be the one to help us dream the big dreams, to ask the questions and make the connections that will take us into a future we might not even be able to imagine from our own perspective. Knowing all this, I was both honored and daunted by the task ahead. Who am I to have a say? How do I know what is important or how to evaluate? I was beginning to feel like a mud student plunked into their first engineering design course, wondering, am I the weak link on the team? How can I be sure not to let everyone down? As soon as our presidential search meeting started, I felt better. Ah, I realized there are people from all over campus, students, faculty, staff, alums, and other trustees. So many smart and incredibly passionate and invested people will all put our heads together and solve this puzzle easily. But as anyone who's ever been on a team knows, no one sees a problem or a solution the same way. Maybe you all agree it's a nail, but what kind of hammer do you really need? Or maybe where I see a nail, you need to see a joint that needs reimagining. The work began with all of us reviewing a long list of potential candidates. I remember Harriet from that very first look. Wow, she's from CMC. How amazing would it be to have someone from our own community? She had an incredible resume, and our board chair, Jim Bean, knew her and had worked with her. She was clearly someone I wanted to get to know better, and I was not alone. Yet, as impressive as Harriet was, Harvey Mudd's reputation had gifted us with a long list of extremely qualified candidates. How would we choose? I found it such a joy to problem solve with this community. Each candidate was listened to so carefully and with so much authentic interest and respect for the extraordinary path that would lead you to this opportunity. As individuals, we carried our opinions with an openness and a lightness, unburdened from the need to be right, but that with the conviction that together we would find the right answer. And that everyone here will have the weight and value of the mission deeply held, providing a clear and unwavering clarity of purpose. And through that focusing lens, together, our many perspectives became one clear decision. When Harriet arrived on campus, she blew us all away. There was no group she met with, no person she spoke with, left untouched by her preparedness, her thoughtful answers, and her clear desire to authentically connect with every person she met. We were deeply impressed that such accomplishment might also come with so much kindness. With our hearts and our heads, where you are a clear decision, Harriet. Welcome to Harriet, welcome to Harvey Mudd, President Nemhard, where together we will dream big dreams and work to prepare for a better and I think kinder world. You may be a graduate of our sister college, but we saw in you that which we love and respect in each other and forever forward embrace you as a member of our special Harvey Mudd community. Welcome. Thank you, Laura. I would like to welcome to the podium Jill Stark. Jill is the former first lady of Claremont McKenna College and a close friend of, to Dr. Nemhard and a member of the Claremont community. I was invited 
to speak at this suspicious occasion because the honoree has made me her mom in Claremont. But before becoming motherly, I want you and President Nemhart to know that in September 1957, I was one of a group of three student body presidents at the Claremont Undergraduate Colleges to welcome this first class of Harvey Mudd students into our group. There were 47 that September, and one was a woman, Jenny Ryan. Jenny lived at Scripps, and the men were housed at Harvey Mudd, but classes and all meals were held at Claremont Men's College. These 47 undergraduates were admitted by CMC's admission office, which had Harvey Mudd new, brand new admission officers on board. It is so appropriate that the sixth president of Harvey Mudd graduated from CMC, whose first president was George C.S. Benson, a key supporter of Joe Platt becoming Harvey Mudd's first president. On top of all this, I was a sitter for Beth Platt, just a little baby, and Anne, a young lady of about nine during my senior year at Scripps College. Anne knew a lot more about taking care of Beth than I did, so she was a big help to me. Now to the motherly part. Does everyone want to know why my adorable daughter, Harriet, smiles all the time? Why is she so happy? Being a college president in Claremont is not like being a president of a big corporation or a huge university. It is fun to be president of a small college in a consortium of other colleges. It is a dream job. Here are three reasons why this Harvey Mudd president smiles. The first reason is the students. Can you imagine being the leader of a group of the most talented and brightest students in the world? I'm not just talking about SAT or ACT scores. I'm talking about students who will become alums and do amazing work to change this world in so many ways. You are the president of these unreal young people, and there is plenty to smile about. Next comes the faculty. You are smiling because you have a team of outstanding faculty who easily could be teaching at leading universities in America. But your faculty really value teaching undergraduates at a small, distinct college. Your faculty can provide your students with challenging research projects, and these students will excel in whatever they do after graduation. Now we have the trustees. Many of them have graduated from Harvey Mudd, as your chairman did in 1977. Many are parents and past, past and present. Many are major leaders in the business world. They know and love this college. Their job is to keep your dreams and hopes alive. They know you will, they will help you maintain this unique, amazing, one-of-a-kind educational institutions thriving for years and years to come, a very good reason to smile with appreciation and happiness. Love, Mom Jill. Thank you, Jill. Next, I'm delighted to welcome John Burge to the podium. John Burge served as Dr. Nemhard's advisor while she attended the University of Michigan and has been a close friend of mine since 1977. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. It's indeed an honor uh, to be offering my greetings to you, Harriet as uh, part of your inauguration as president here at Harvey Mudd. It hasn't been, 
in fact, my great pleasure over many years to witness all of Harriet's numerous accomplishments and to see her career and her family flourish. I was truly fortunate when Harriet asked me whether I would agree to be her dissertation advisor. I knew, of course, right away that she was going to be successful based on her excellent training at CMC in Arizona State. But there was something else about how she was approaching the PhD program that especially impressed me. Unlike many students who are looking days or maybe weeks into the future, she was looking far ahead and knew what she was gonna do all along the way. She described to me how she was going to quickly pass her qualifying exams and then start to work directly on her dissertation, how she was going to finish that promptly again and go on to an academic career right away. She, of course, did all those things exactly as she had planned. She especially took charge of the work on her thesis. She had this interest in quality control and wanted to combine it with optimization techniques that I was more familiar with. She then saw opportunities with observations she had made at a cereal manufacturer. She noticed how incredibly long hours or even days it could take from starting up a new batch of cereal until the system started to produce quality product. Harriet decided that was a problem she could fix with her quality control and optimization skills. She developed an extremely effective method that reduced wasted product and lost time, crafting a precise engineering solution. I use this example in my classes to this day to describe the impact of setup times and the value of strong systems analysis. I know that Harriet will similarly be applying all her skills and looking forward for Harvey Mudd now as its president and in defining its best possible future. I wish you, Harriet, all the best in this endeavor and congratulate all of you of the Mudd community in benefiting as I have from sharing in Harriet's journey through career and life. Thank you. Thank you, John. Giving today's greeting as a former student of Dr. Nimhard's is Hyo Jung Kang. Hyo Jung received her PhD in Industrial Engineering and Operations Research from the Pennsylvania State University. Dr. Kang and President Nimhard collaborated on publishing a book and several journal articles on healthcare systems engineering. Please welcome Hyo Jung Kang. Today, as we gather to celebrate Dr. Nemhart's inauguration, Harvey Mudd College's president, I'm deeply honored and delighted to stand before you and express my profound gratitude for the mentorship and the leadership that Dr. Nemhart has provided me. Dr. Nemhart has been more than an academic advisor to me. She has been a guiding light, a source of inspiration, and a pillar of support throughout my academic journey. Despite her busy schedule, she always made time for me, spending countless hours answering my questions and offering invaluable feedback that propelled me forward. From my earliest academic endeavors fraught with uncertainty and self-doubt, she stood by my side every step of the way. Her belief in my potential has given me the confidence to push my past limitations and strive for greatness. Even after I graduated, her support continued unabated. As I navigated challenges in my career as a junior faculty member, she's been always there to lend an empathic ear and nurture my capacity to approach challenges with both curiosity and courage. I tried to carry her approach to mentorship forward through my own work with my students. Without, without a doubt, she is the best role model I could have had the opportunity to learn from. In addition to professional excellence, the key qualities of a leader are empathy, compassion, and kindness, which fosters a culture of care across commu academic community and beyond. Dr. Nem Hart demonstrates all of these qualities, especially showing genuine concern 
for the welfare of her students and extending her support beyond the academic needs of students to address personal challenges. She ensures students feel cared for and supported in all aspects of their lives. This inclusive caring environment has been particularly meaningful to me. As an international student, communication was a hurdle I faced, but Dr. Nemhart never made me feel inadequate. Her patience and attentive listening created a safe space for me to learn and grow, which I know is shared by many others under her guidance. Her dedication to building a community where every individual feels valued and empowered, regardless of background, is truly commendable. As Dr. Nemhart takes on this new role as president, I have every confidence that she'll continue to lead with the same spirit of courageous leadership, passion, excellence, integrity, and humility. She'll inspire students, staff, faculty members, and community members to dream big and embrace challenges with resilience and always strive for excellence in all that we do. Congratulations, President Nemhart. Thank you, Hyojung. I would now like to, like to invite Naomi Nemhard to the podium to share a greeting from the family. Good morning. I would just like to share with you all three sayings of my mom's that I grew up hearing and have had some impact on me in one way or another. The first is one some of you may have heard, if you don't have a plan B, you don't have a plan. <laughs> I would use this, I would hear this used to discuss anything from booking a plane ticket to applying to colleges. And in hearing this so often, I think I learned not to get so caught up on things going perfectly. Because if you have a plan B, the world isn't going to fall apart if things do not go perfectly according to your plan A. The second saying is more of a proposed retort. Um, it came about because when we were little, my siblings and I would be told often just how adorable we were. And uh, what my mom taught us to say back was, and I'm smart too. <laughs> I always needed a little bit of prompting to say it, but in retrospect, what a badass thing for a six-year-old to be saying. <laughs> But in encouraging this response, my mom taught me a couple of things. One, to always have a response locked and loaded, but also people will be quick to compliment and notice the things about you which you have little control over and are most obvious, but it's okay and it's good to be proud of yourself for the things you've worked hard for and that you've accomplished. The final saying I'd like to share with you all is something I heard nearly every school day of my childhood from the time I was running out the door in the snow to catch the elementary school bus till my mom dropped me off in my freshman college dorm room, she would say, be good, be smart. Always those two things, always in that order. And as familiar as those words became to me, um, their meaning and the order of those instructions has continued to grow. And that's to say, be smart, um, but be good first, because um, sure, unconditional kindness is kind, but your intelligence, your brilliance, your smartness must, must have goodness and kindness at the forefront in order to make the kinds of impacts we need to see. Mom, thank you for these lessons and so many more. I'm proud of you. I am so glad to be here celebrating you with the wonderful community you've gathered. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Our last greeting is not only a professor of engineering at Harvey Mudd College, but someone very dear to Harriet. Please welcome David Nemhard to the podium.
Good morning, HMC community. I want to start by saying just how very grateful I am for not only being here, but the welcome, the sincere expressions of uh, welcome and reception and the atmosphere of community and making us feel more than comfortable in our new roles here. You know, this is not completely normal. Um, many places that we've been, this by far exceeds any of those. There's an incredibly strong culture of both intellectual capacity, uh, excellence, and stewardship of the idea of being mutters. And I find this both endearing, fascinating, and, and wonderful. And personally, I've noticed this from the number of students who come to my evening office hours, all the way to the number of students who come to my 8 a.m. office hours. <laughs> Harriet, the love of my life. She and I met over 33 years ago, and we've been married for almost 32 of those. Uh, we have three wonderful daughters and a grandson. Uh, I'm proud of all of them. And I think we've made a good team. Uh, and as you all know, in a team, uh, you're bringing together people with different capabilities, uh, different strengths. So, what are Harriet's strengths? Well, there are obviously too many to mention here, given that we're here, right? Uh, but I'll, I'll mention a couple. Uh, she asks great questions, and she listens to the answers to those questions. She does her homework, often from before the sun rises to after it sets, or as her grandmother would say, from can't see to can't see. <laughs> and she has this uncanny ability to recognize the goodness the greatness of people, of their ideas, and their works. So when I contemplated coming here and being part of this community and recognizing how much of Harriet would be shared with Harvey Mudd College, it gave me pause. But as I've become a part of the community and met so many fabulous, incredible people, from students to faculty, staff, and the community at large, I've become proud and frankly quite honored to be a part of this community and to share Harriet with this community. May her leadership in propelling innovation and setting Harvey Mudd into the future be a strong one. So thank you very much. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Harvey Mudd College, I present to you Dr. Harriet B. Nemhard and certify that on November 14th, 2022, in accordance with the bylaws of this institution, Dr. Nemhard was elected president of the college. We present her for induction to this office today, March 1st, 2024. By virtue of the authority vested in me as chair of the Board of Trustees, it is my privilege and high honor to declare you, Harriet B. Nemhard, to be the sixth president of Harvey Mudd College and entrust to you the rights and responsibilities thereto appertaining. I present to you the sixth president of Harvey Mudd College, Dr. Harriet B. Nemhard.
goodness, I tell you, my heart is so full. It is so full, and I'm so incredibly grateful for everyone, every single one of you in this amazing, amazing community. To our esteemed chair of the board, Jim Bean, our trustees, former presidents Clave and Strauss, distinguished delegates, students, faculty, staff, honored guests, alumni, parents, friends, and descendants of the founders and prior leaders of the college, my heartfelt greetings to you on this day. I am excited to join you in building an even stronger Harvey Mudd College. As we embark on this next chapter together, it's essential that we pause to reflect on the values that have shaped our beloved institution. Harvey Mudd College is renowned for delivering a liberal arts education through a focus on the STEM disciplines. We're committed to continuously generating and sharing solutions that ignite positive change, drawing inspiration not only from the legacy of our past, but also from the limitless potential of our future endeavors. To the 7C presidents, presidents Gabby Starr, Hiram Chodosh, Amy Marcus Newhall, Strom Thacker, Lynn Jessup, and Shelley Schuster, and to Mr. Stieg Laniskog, thank you for your partnership as Harvey Mudd College continues to live up to the promise of the Claremont Group Plan. I look forward to the opportunity to work collaboratively, integrating our shared knowledge toward a brighter future for all. My journey to this day is due to a marvelous village for which I must give thanks. First, I'd like to thank my wonderful husband, David, who's been a true partner in composing and cultivating a meaningful life. I'd like to thank our three children, Olivia, Naomi, and Charlotte, amazing children from whom I continue to learn from every day. And our delightful grandson, Kai, who's not with us today, but is in my heart every day as he is simply joy in motion. We are a super six. I thank my family of origin, in particular my brother, Michael Black, who's here as a delegate for Fort Valley State University and HBCU, where our grandmother was its very first graduate in 1941. My uncle, Harold Black, who is here as a delegate for the University of Georgia, where he was one of its first black students to graduate in 1966. And my sister-in-law, Ashley, and cousins, Janice, Phyllis, and Earl, who are here as delegates for Clemson, Tuskegee, Georgia State, and Howard Universities. Today, I come to you as one, but I stand as 10,000 because I stand on the shoulders of many ancestors. Among the many ancestors smiling down on me today are my mother and father, Helen and Charles, as well as their mothers and fathers, Nancy and Mac and Harriet and Eldred. I know their spirits and their teachings are with me every day. And on today, I know that they are proud. None would be prouder than my mother, who helped me to move into my Claremont McKenna dorm room in Phillips Hall. Her belief in me 
knew no bounds. I came to CMC on the advice of my science seminar teacher, Mrs. Justice of Camelback High School in Phoenix, Arizona. It had to have been at least a decade after I graduated that I realized that Mrs. J kept the science lab open after school for us latchkey kids on her own time and dime. She was a true gem of a teacher. And I'm so grateful that in adulthood, I had the opportunity to thank her before she too joined the ancestors. And finally, I say thank you to all of my friends. I thank those that I met at the tender age of 16 here at CMC, as well as all of those that I've met along my life's journey. I'm especially grateful to my advisor, mentors, colleagues, collaborators, and former students for their invaluable contribution to my growth both as a scholar and as an engineer. Harvey Mudd College welcomed its inaugural class in 1957 when 48 students and seven faculty came together to start a college that would emphasize the humanistic aspects of technology. Our founders believed that technology divorced from humanity is worse than no technology at all. And our first president, Joseph Platt, wanted the college's curriculum to provide an emphasis on science with a conscience in order to educate leaders who understand the impact of their work on society. Despite our relatively young age as a college, there has been tremendous intellectual wealth accumulated for the world as Harvey Mudd has carried out its mission. Our graduates' contributions have had far-reaching impacts from technological innovations that power database systems and store data in the cloud, to sustainability practices that turn industrial waste gas into biofuels. Our alumni are working to eliminate vaccine-preventable deaths in children, advancing healthcare and science advocacy, and providing expertise to help fight tropical eye diseases. They are advancing the field of autonomous vehicles. They have revolutionized the wine industry and have contributed to the field of gamma ray astrophysics. Mutters are opera singers. They produce Tony Award winning Broadway plays and the wildly popular James Bond films. Since the earliest days, Harvey Mudd College has had a tradition of developing and sharing innovative pedagogical approaches. Since its inception in 1963, the college's clinic program has been a cornerstone of our educational approach. This pioneering model has since become a standard for engineering science and mathematics schools around the country. Today, the clinic program allows Harvey Mudd students to collaborate with peers from across the Claremont colleges who together tackle some of the most pressing challenges. Our student teams have developed novel medical devices, improved safety for space science experiments, and designed interventions to invest the environmental and social determinants of COVID-19. The Harvey Mudd community has made strides to strengthen diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Thanks to initiatives such as BRAID, launched under President Emerita Maria Clave, the college has seen an increase of women students from 30% in 2004 to 50% today, and of underrepresented students of color from 8% in 2010 to 29% today. Every day, our work to further inclusive excellence continues. In these and so many other ways, great and small, our alumni, our pedagogy, and our programs have made an outsized impact in the world. And now we look towards the future. I spent my first eight months as president in conversations with our community. It began with many sessions around connecting with the community and envisioning our future. 
from these conversations came my vision, our vision for the future of Harvey Mudd. One of the cornerstones of my presidency is a steadfast commitment to a healthy environment. Embracing diversity of thought, background, and, and experience is not just a goal, it's an imperative. Prioritizing equity, inclusion, and belonging creates an environment where everyone can thrive. Every person's well-being matters, and we must ensure that each person feels integral to our community. The work done during our last reaccreditation effort explored key issues for our students, faculty, and staff around workload, mental health, and wellness. These are pillars not just of student success, but also the continued success of our faculty and staff. Developing innovative solutions to today's most pressing challenges is a laudable goal, but it is also an immense responsibility. We must find ways as a community to address the stresses of that responsibility in more holistic ways. Each of us must prioritize mental health and well-being so that we can better ensure that all members of our community have the resilience and strength needed to excel. My vision is that together we produce students who are good at STEM and good at life. We must model that. By strengthening and demonstrating our commitment to each other's well-being, by providing the space and the grace to breathe and to regroup, we strengthen our capacity to carry out our mission. Our path toward fulfilling our mission will be amplified by cultivating in our students the courage to examine their values and bet on their impactful ideas to meet what the world needs. This summer, for example, we are launching eShip Studio, a program that will support a cohort of Harvey Mudd students in developing entrepreneurial solutions that address societal needs and grand challenges. Students will be advised by a Harvey Mudd faculty member knowledgeable in the focus area. They will develop the foundational skills necessary to explore the viability of their ideas and learn to evaluate entrepreneurial endeavors by their impacts on the planet and its people. As we consider the planet, we're actively recruiting faculty to create programs of study where our students can pursue a joint education in one of our existing majors plus climate studies. This new approach will ensure that our program reflects the interdisciplinary nature of the climate crisis facing our world. It will equip students to harness their chosen field of study toward meaningful climate solutions and responsible innovation. We are grateful to the many dedicated faculty and staff who have contributed to developing this program. We're thankful to the many trustees, alumni, parents, and friends who have invested in this effort. Your generosity continues to power Harvey Mudd College's long tradition of excellence in liberal arts STEM education to meet the needs of society. I look forward to our joint efforts to strengthen our campus community and foster a healthy environment while providing our students with the tools they need to shape the future. As I reflect on the history of this great college and on my first months here, I want to share that I've been inspired by the amazing talent within this community. Our faculty's commitment to exemplary teaching and cutting edge research, our students' thirst for knowledge, and the incredible efforts of our staff underscore the dedication, the brilliance, and the vitality that define Harvey Mudd College. As a community, our mission and vision are our guiding stars. They encapsulate 
our commitment to providing an outstanding STEM education while nurturing well-rounded individuals who are not only adept in their fields, but also possess the skills and empathy to make a meaningful impact. As we come together at this moment in our history to reflect on our past and dream about our future, I'm filled with hope and excitement for the boundless possibilities, knowing that we are worthy of special endeavors. Thank you for entrusting me with the great honor of leading this remarkable institution. I'm deeply committed to serving Harvey Mudd College, and I look forward to working hand in hand with each of you in realizing our collective vision. Together, let us embrace this journey with optimism, courage, determination, and a shared dedication to excellence. Together, let us continue propelling innovation as we push the frontiers of knowledge and inspire future generations of thinkers and leaders. Together, let us soar to even greater heights. Thank you. December 17, 1903, Bishop Wright of the United Brethren received a telegram from his boys Wilbur and Orville, who got to knit into their heads to spend their vacation in a little camp out on the dunes of the North Carolina coast. With a homemade glider, they knocked together themselves the telegram read. Success for Christ's sake, for me too, with a homemade glider, they knocked together themselves a telegram. The figures were a little wrong, but the fact remains, a couple of young bicycles, mechanics from Dayton, Ohio, had designed and flown for the first time ever, a practical airplane. In the days, my machines were up, they were all surprised, my machines were up,
Thank you, Harriet, and thank you, members of the choir, Associate Professor of Music and Director of Choirs, Charles Cam, and Jonathan Johnson on piano. It is now my distinct pleasure to welcome a very special guest joining us today. Ada Limon is the author of six books of poetry, including The Carrying, which won the National Book Critics Circle Award for Poetry. Her most recent book of poetry, The Hurting Kind, was shortlisted for the Griffin Poetry Prize. She is the 24th Poet Laureate of the United States and a re recipient of a MacArthur Fellowship. As the Poet Laureate, her signature project is called You Are Here and focuses on how poetry can help connect us to the natural world. Welcome, Ada. The poet Emily Dickinson once wrote, I dwell in possibility. My whole life I have believed in the imagination and its ability to expand our idea of what is possible. It's all too easy these days to surrender to cynicism and give in to catastrophic thinking, but I believe in the power of exploring all the bright edges of our own existence and in doing so, embrace the potential for powerful change. Today, on the first day of Women's History Month and in honor of dear President Nemard, I'm going to read two poems in honor of possibilities. The first was commissioned by the National Climate Assessment and speaks to our connection to nature and our collective ability to move forward. Startlement. It is a forgotten pleasure, the pleasure of the unexpected blue-bellied lizard skittering off his sunspot rock, the flicker of an unknown bird by the bus stop. To think perhaps we are not distinguishable and therefore no loneliness can exist here. Species to species in the same blue air, smoke, wing flutter buzzing, a car horn coming. So many unknown languages to think we have only honored this strange human tongue. If you sit by the riverside, you see a culmination of all things upstream. We know now we were never at the circle center. Instead, all around us, something is living or trying to live. The world says, what we are becoming, we are becoming together. The world says, one type of dream has ended and another has just begun. The world says, once we were separate, and now we must move in unison. The last poem I'll read was commissioned by NASA to be engraved on the side of a spacecraft called the Europa Clipper, which will travel 1.8 billion miles to Jupiter's second moon called Europa, which is an icy moon that NASA believes may have all of the ingredients for life. A week from today, I'll speak with Dr. Lori Glaze, the director of NASA's Science Mission Planetary Science Division at South by Southwest. And together we will unveil the vault plate where my poem is engraved in my own handwriting. It was, as you might imagine, one of the hardest poetry prompts of my life. But I believe that creative challenges should be met with curiosity and openness. I believe in dwelling in possibilities. It took a total of 19 drafts, but now it's been signed by 2.6 million people from around the world who added their names to the poem and to the mission. 
Here is the completed poem that will be launched into space on October 10th. And to President Harriet Nemhard, may all your possibilities be endless. In Praise of Mystery, a poem for Europa. Arching under the night sky, inky with black expansiveness, we point to the planets we know. We pin quick wishes on stars. From Earth, we read the sky as if it is an unerring book of the universe, expert and evident. Still, there are mysteries below our sky. The whale song, the songbird singing its call in the bough of a wind-shaken tree. We are creatures of constant awe, curious at beauty, at leaf and blossom, at grief and pleasure, sun and shadow. And it is not darkness that unites us, not the cold distance of space, but the offering of water. Each drop of rain, each rivulet, each pulse, each vein. Oh, second moon, we too are made of water, of vast and beckoning seas. We too are made of wonders, of great and ordinary loves, of small, invisible worlds, of a need to call out through the dark. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. Thank you all for attending today's investiture. Our celebration will continue back on Harvey Mudd's campus with an all-campus lunch on the Liquid Amber Mall lawn. Following the lunch, we have opportunities for guests to participate in the inauguration community engagement activity to assemble science kits for students and attend tours of our Makerspace Center. We will close out the evening with a time of dancing and desserts at 7 p.m. on campus. Thank you all for joining us today and celebrating this momentous occasion in the college's history. Please remain seating, seated until the recessional exits the auditorium. Probably won't take too long. <laughs> Thank you.